Hey everybody, Dear Really here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of The Men of Yoshiwara Kikuya, or Gyakuten Kikuya. Chapter 2, Our Future At night when Iroha-san went to Kikuya, I didn't know my room was this big. I ended up staying home alone. Though we'd only been together for a month, I already felt weird being in my room by myself. I guess that means it's become natural for us to be together. I became keenly aware of my loneliness as I prepared the bed. I knew Iroha-san was away because he had work to do, but even our silly conversations before bed were essential to me at this moment. That's what I came to realize tonight. He had already become irreplaceable to me. The next morning, someone came to tell me that he was going to stay in Kikuya for a few days. I had been preparing for that, but I was happy that he asked me to go there to bring his clothes. I could see Iroha-san. I could see him and talk to him. I tried to hold in my excitement, and before I knew it, I was walking briskly down the main street. I knew a feeling and behavior similar to what I was now experiencing. I see. It's the same as when Iroha-san was the manager. When I thought about that, I noticed how selfish I had become. You're not going to say Yoshiwara is more comfortable than my place, are you, Iroha-san? I felt worried. The boy who came from the boat brought with him an unseen worry. If I get too worried about it, it will make him worried too. I shook my head and tried to brush off my worries. Then I walked in front of Kikuya. You have to give up your naive ideas at once. This voice is Iroha-san? My body shrank in reaction to his sudden scolding voice. Excuse me. When I went inside, Iroha-san and Azusa-san were arguing near the stairs. Why don't you like to work as a gentleman? This is where you wanted to be. Iroha-san looked down at him with cold eyes. I said I don't like it. Azusa-san looked away from him to express his strong opposition. Then get out of here. I can't. Stop being selfish. Hey. Iroha-san clapped his hand to call a manservant. How may I be of service? One man who was looking at them from a distance came closer to Iroha-san and kneeled before him. Put him in the punishment room for three days. Oh no. I knew what that meant. I frantically tried to stop him. Don't worry. A calm voice rang out near me. When I looked back, Kagura-san was standing there with a calm look on his face. But confining him to that room means... You think he'll be flogged, right? But Iroha-san doesn't have the right to do that. Oh, now that you mention it, that's right. He'll just be under house arrest, but he is quite a problem for us. Azusa-san might have already known about it, so he continued to adamantly refuse. Sorry to ask, but what happened? After Kagura-san asked Iroha to come, Azusa worked seriously for the first day. But then he started to hate working as a helper. Oh dear, then what can he do here? Who knows, they suggested he have clients, but he also refused that, and this is where we are now. I see. You certainly said he didn't want to have clients when we came here for the first time. But what would happen to him after this? I took you in since we're brethren, but... He pressed his fingers to his forehead and sighed. I shouldn't have taken in someone as problematic as this. Go wherever you want. You took me in and just like that you're abandoning me? How incredibly selfish. Who's the one being selfish here? Iroha-san, isn't it just that he hasn't gotten used to his new life yet? Unable to just watch them go on like this, I spoke out. Misao, how long have you been there? Iroha-san noticed me and walked over to me. I got here just a moment ago. I bought you your clothes, Iroha-san. My clothes. Thank you so much. Iroha-san's face looked worn out. He looked like he hadn't been sleeping. Azusa-san must have tired him out physically and mentally. What could I do for that? You came at a good time. Can you tell him too? Tell him not to force me into a job that I hate. He wasn't going to stay in Kikuya for life, so even if he taught him how to entertain... Hey, Iroha-san? If you're going to speak in his defense, then I don't want to hear it. No, it's not like that. He doesn't have to be in Kikuya. How about finding something else he can do in Yoshiwara? Do you think that exists? 
The boy threw a tantrum because he didn't want to clean. I see. What could Asusa-san do? It's not like he had any debt, but he did need to make money to eat while the other gentlemen... Hmm. Suddenly, Iroha-san directed a severe look at me. Don't say something foolish like you'll take him in at the warehouse. <sighs> he saw right through me. That's the only thing I will firmly oppose. The look on Iroha-san's face was that of complete annoyance. That caught me by surprise. It is that bad? Yes, he's already torn me away from you, like this Misao. I don't need some bothersome insect in the way at our house, too. Iroha-san said that bluntly. Um... Ch -ch -ch -ch. Just for a while, I can't leave him I don't know. I can't leave him alone. <laughs> but if you leave him here, it will be a problem for Kikuya. If I kick him out of Kikuya, he won't be anyone's problem. If you did that, Azusa-san would fall to ruin. When we look at Azusa-san, he looked away from us to hide his uncomfortableness. Hey, can you stop deciding things for me without my involvement? Your involvement? Well then, why don't you suggest something? I can't have clients and can't do physical labor. So? As before, you keep throwing childish tantrums. Refusing to do anything. Have you no shame? I'm fine if it's childish. I just don't like it. But I'm not leaving this place. Azusa-san clearly stated that. This is useless. Let's drag him by his neck and turn him into the police. Can't we consider that as a last resort? I think so. Azusa-san, can you stop being so selfish now? If you don't work, you can't eat. You're old enough to understand these things, right? It was a waste of time to beat around the bush with him. With that thought in mind, I spoke to him in a voice that was clearer than normal. Well, aren't you so great? I'm not saying that I don't want to work at all. Azusa-san looked unusually flustered and mumbled a little. What happened? Are you saying that you don't want to work at all? I'm not. If it's something else, I'll do it. And what kind of thing is that? Is it something you can do here? Displaying some interest, Iroha-san faced him and asked him. Azusa-san made a face like that of a stubborn child and thought for a while. I'm good at fortune-telling. That's how I was making a living. Fortune-telling? You mean, like palm reading? <laughs> I don't think that'll work here. Are you making fun of me? Fine, I'll tell your army Sal's fortune then. I'm okay. I'm not interested in that. Huh? Oh, I didn't know that. Misao, are you interested in fortune-telling? Yes, I like fortune-telling and paper fortunes. What do you want to do? She said she's interested in it, so tell her fortune. You. People say you're selfish, don't they? They do not. Iroha-san put on a complete smile and combed his bangs to the side to finish the conversation. Okay, put your hand out. I put my right hand out as told. Wait, what are you going to do? Iroha-san grabbed the hand that I put out. What? I need to touch her to tell her fortune. Tell her fortune without touching her. No, I can't do that. Isn't it okay if he touches my hand just a little? I can't let an unfamiliar man touch you. Look, just take my hand and tell my fortune. If it's about our relationship, my hand should be fine. After saying that, Yiraha-san put out his right hand. What an annoying guy. How can you be with a guy like him? <laughs> he isn't annoying. I'm comfortable and happy with him. Huh. Azusa-san then closed his eyes. Azusa-san slowly opened his eyes. I have the results. Azusa-san let go of Iroha-san's hand and said the results of his fortune-telling. You two have no connection. Soon the time will come for you to separate. What? Huh? Even though I knew it was just fortune-telling, I still felt shocked. What uninteresting results. Th that's it? What else is there to say? He stared off into space with uninterested eyes and quizzically cocked his head to the side. Um... Think. Watch him. Was Iroha-san really unconcerned with the results? 
Feeling worried, I looked at him to see how he was doing. You don't need to look at me with such worried eyes. I'm fine. It won't come true. Yes. There's absolutely nothing to be worried about, Misao. Yes, I guess you're right. Even though I said that, I didn't feel very good emotionally. Iraha-san hugged my shoulder and smiled at me. I love you, Misao. My feelings for you will never disappear. Or is it that your feelings are something that you can't easily lose, Misao? He put strength in his hand on my shoulder. In his glance, I felt his worry and fear that I didn't feel before. My words had no more power over our future than those of the fortune-telling. When I thought about that, my heart felt tight, with pain. No, I certainly feel that my feelings will never disappear. That's a relief. Yoroha-san put his usual cool smile on his face, and then relaxed his arms and hugged me. This is stupid. I have absolutely no intention of entertaining you. Don't worry. So, will you hire me? Okay, I'll let you work under the condition that you don't bring displeasure to the clients. Manager. Y yes We'll see how it goes for ten days. If it adds to your profits, he'll continue his fortune-telling. And if it doesn't? Do I need to say anything? I'll force him to have clients as a gentleman, even if I must tie him down to do so. Yoroha-san nodded with satisfaction and looked at Azusa-san. I won't accept a no this time. I won't say it. I have confidence. Seems all the women coming here worry about what will happen with their gentlemen in the future. I felt that this was the first time that Azusa-san looked at Iroha-san with confident eyes. Perhaps Iroha-san also felt his confidence. He nodded with satisfaction and released him. I'm glad that both of you came to an agreement. It's perfectly normal. He isn't a child, so it's easier for me because he didn't cry about it. I see. Well, here are your clothes. Thank you. I'll go back after we decide where and how he'll work here. Okay, well then, I'll be going. See you. I'll take you to the entrance. I'm going to put my things away, so please wait. Yoroha-san went to a room in the back of the shop. When I looked at his back, the results of the fortune-telling came across my mind. <sighs> you don't need to get so disappointed. Oh, uh, Kagura-san. I know how you two met. Your efforts until now are more important than fortunes. Thank you so much. Kagura-san also left the room. Let's go, Misao. As I was invited, I visited Inari Shrine. Since it was daytime, the shrine was surrounded by a quiet atmosphere. Um, you must be tired from work. I think it would be better to go back and take a rest. I feel, m I feel the most healed when I'm with you, Misao. And I've been working during the day lately. So I can't sleep at this time. I thought that if that's the case, then I want to sit down next to him, but just then... Huh? What? Iroha-san put his arm around my waist and made me sit on his knees. Um, this is embarrassing. No one's coming here at this time. That was most likely true. In Yoshiwara, the day and nights were reversed, but I still felt embarrassed. Um, please, may I sit down next to you? Do you think I'd let you go? He put his strength into his arm that hugged my waist. This made it so I couldn't escape. You should give up. <laughs> yes. I hung my head down and nodded to Iroha-san. I seriously won't let you go. Fortune-telling is unreliable. Iroha-san told me that in a strong manner, and it made my heart heat up. Yet, yes you're right. What I should be believing were the words of the person that I love. And yet I got tripped up by the results of the fortune-telling. Why don't you look up at the scenery instead of only looking down? As instructed, I then looked up. The scenery I saw from the shrine grounds had changed since the time that we had met. I didn't expect that I would come to Yoshiwara with you again, Misao. Yes, it brings back memories. I had no intention of coming back to this nostalgic place. I want to hurry back to the room where you're staying. Yes, I'm waiting for you to return. Iroha-san's arm hugged my shoulder. I felt that it had been a while since I buried my face in the Iroha-san's chest and left my body to the time that I passed with him. I had been listening to his heartbeat, and I didn't know how long I had been doing that. 
Misao. I heard Iroha-san's voice. Are you going back now? No, it's not about that. Iroha-san chuckled a little. I have something to give you, Misao. What could it be? I turned my head back and stared at his hand that had pulled something out from his chest pocket. The thing that he pulled out was a hairpin adorned with a red agate bead. Two gold chains swung from the beaded part of the hairpin. Um, what is this? Do you remember? As I was about to ask him what, I suddenly remembered. When Iroha-san was still in Kikuya, I gave him a hairpin adorned with a red glass bead. I thought that it would be interesting if it was exactly the same as mine. So he wanted to say that he had prepared something a little different for me. Even so, the hairpin had a red shining glass bead and finely worked gold, gold decorations. Even people who didn't know anything about crafts could tell this was expensive. The hairpin that I gave you wasn't that expensive, so... It's not about the price. I was looking for something that matches you, but Misao. As a result, I thought this was the best one for you, that's all. I feel a little impatient. Azusa slowed the preparations for our wedding ceremony. If I made you worry because of that, it would shame me as a man, so I prepared this for you. I trust your words, Iroha-san, so I'm okay. Still, I want my promise to have a physical form. While I'm away, please keep this by your side, in place of me. Iroha-san spoke to me with seductive eyes, so I couldn't refuse it anymore. Thank you so much. I'll cherish this. I then received the superbly crafted hairpin. I sighed in awe of its exquisite beauty. Yes, I'll put it into your hair. Yes. I handed the hairpin to Iroha and turned my head to the side. His fingers combed my hair up so that he could easily put the hairpin in my hair. His fingers touched me like I was fragile, and my heart beat in a strangely disordered manner. Iroha's fingers sometimes touched my skin. Whenever they touched me, my heart would beat fast, and I felt my cheeks turning red. Finished. Look at me. As instructed, I looked at Yeruha-san. He smiled with satisfaction. Ah, you really are beautiful. Y you're exaggerating. I felt embarrassed, so I looked away from him. But Yeruha-san's hand grabbed my chin and wouldn't allow me to do that. Please entertain my eyes by letting me look at you a little more. After he said that, he brought his face close to where the hairpin was. Yeruha-san's lips barely touched me, which tickled and made me wriggle my body. It's like you're seducing me. No way! I'm not doing that! Iroha-san said that it looks good on me, and smiled. Then he started to kiss my hair. I was happy when he started to kiss me, but his kisses were getting deeper, which confused me. I iroha san wait! Wait, we're outside! As I talked to him, he didn't stop kissing me. After I finished speaking, Iroha separated from me a little and grinned at me. I haven't seen you for a few days, so I'm misal deficient right now. Iroha-san's fingers caressed my bosom over my clothing. Ah, The thing that I want is right in front of me. I can't help myself. His fingers made my body start to ache. I wanted him to touch me more and more. I'm happy that you feel that way, but... A very small amount of self-control came over me, but in contrast my body reacted honestly. You probably already knew this would happen. As soon as you sat down on my knees, right? Uh, it's not like that. I won't let you slyly escape. I hung my head down to escape from Iroha-san's glance. You came here well aware of what would happen, didn't you? My sense of shame said no, but my heart of desire said yes. Hey, bring your face up. I can't kiss you in this position. Don't do it so intensely. As instructed, I brought my face up and looked at Iroha-san. I won't do anything to humiliate you, Miss Misao. Was he telling the truth? Iroha-san brought his face down close to me, and we kissed. While we were kissing, my chest was exposed, and Iroha-san was fondling my bosom. Sometimes strongly and sometimes softly. Ah. <sighs> hmm. You can moan more, you know. I shook my head. Iroha-san's fingers stroked my legs that were sitting on his knees. When he touched the secret part deep in my thighs, Iroha-san strongly pressed his lips to mine. Of course, I won't let anyone hear your voice. 
With a sensual smile on his lips, Yura Hassan kissed me passionately to stifle my voice. Then I was penetrated on the shrine grounds, and I was finished. It's been a few days since I met Yura Hassan after several days of being apart. I was heading to Kikuya in order to bring Yura Hassan his clothes again. When I came in front of Kikuya, there was a crowd of people even though the shop hadn't opened yet. I told you it's true. But it's just fortune telling, isn't it? I think it's fake. Maybe, but he is very handsome. I don't think it would waste your time to see him. The women were looking inside Kikuya from the entrance while they were talking. From their conversation, I understood that they wanted something. I'm surprised that it got so famous in such a short time. But as handsome as he is, could he really have become this popular? Could his fortune telling be accurate? Hey you, if you're just going to stare into space, I'll skip ahead of you. Are, are you talking to me? Of course I'm talking to you. You look so unhappy. You're coming here to look into your future, aren't you? No, I... I heard that he earned Yoshiwara's trust in three days. In three days? Is his fortune telling that accurate? Yes, he's infallible. The women quickly headed towards the shop. Oh, no. Then the results of the fortune telling from before... Was what he said about Yura-san and my future also... No, I have to be suspicious about this. I just need to trust Yura-san's words. I made up my mind and was about to go inside of the shop when... Huh? Oh, you've come again. Azusa-san, you, you were going out? I was taking a break. What about you? I bought clothes for Yura-san. By the way, there's a long line of people for you. Of course. I told you that I'm confident. Yes, indeed. Azusa-san's words made me worried. I didn't believe that the result of his fortune-telling was true. Why should I be so worried? You look better than I thought. Huh? Oh, do you think so? I wasn't living with Iroha-san now, so I couldn't be well. But he said I looked better. I was a bit surprised by his words. I guess better isn't the right word. Azusa-san thought deeply, and then suddenly narrowed his eyes. You look happy. Huh? Yes, that's it. You look really happy. That's... I tried to be normal and kept smiling. I'm going to see Iroha-san soon, so it may make me happy. I see. I don't know how you feel, though. Azusa-san grinned at me and smiled cynically. Does the fortune really seem like it'll come true? I don't think so. Why don't you come here with a sadder face? I'll tear you two apart with the results of my fortune, and your husband will be busy with me. Isn't it strange for you to be carefree in a situation like that? I'm not carefree right now. I said that to him in a rougher manner, then quickly recovered my mouth. Um, so you can talk like that. Well, then you should get hurt more because of me. You're cuter when you're hurt. Ugh. I started to get mad at him for making fun of me like that. I suddenly felt scared that he would take everything away from me. See? You think my fortune-telling will come true, right? Never! You should grow up into a real man and let Iroha-san leave. How can you be so selfish? I said that to him more harshly than I imagined I would. I, I'm sorry. The people around us started to look at me. I felt uncomfortable, so I tried to turn back and go home. Wait, Misao. I was surprised and dazed by Iroha-san's sudden appearance. I iroha san why are you here? I thought you might come here around now. No, what I'm asking is... When you guys talk loudly, I can hear it, you know? iroha san laughed happily. I felt embarrassed and turned my head down slightly. Ah, I'm so sorry. The shop hasn't opened yet, so you don't need to apologize, Misao. More than that, I'm the person who should be saying sorry. Before I asked why, Iroha-san moved. He gently covered my cheeks with his hands and lifted my face up so that our eyes could meet. His smile looked like he saw right through me and knew everything. It made my heart beat wildly. Your smile looks very sad, Miso. Um, no, I'm okay. Though I said that to him, Iroha-san just shook his head. Ah, <sighs> he knew what I was feeling. It was enough for me. I really am okay. It will just be a little longer, right? Yes, that is the plan. But I'll be home for tonight and sleep there. But you still have work to do. 
I'm fam I'm famous for being a devout husband. Isn't it natural to put you ahead of everything else? Iraha-san said that in a funny way. It made me chuckle. Please don't push yourself too much. Yes, you should have some tea before you go. You should have some tea before you go home. I nodded and started to walk as led by Iraha-san. Suddenly, Iraha-san stopped as if he had remembered something. He looked at Azusa-san, who was still standing there. Azusa, don't forget. Are you going to preach to me again? No, I'm saying this out of unnecessary kindness. Woman is a creature that can smile while crying on the inside. The more beautiful their mind and their love for their partner, the happier their smile while caring. That might be true. I'm more than happy that he understood those kind of feelings. Well, a child like you will never understand that, though. Encouraged by Iroha-san, I had a cup of tea in Kikuya. And then I went back home, the home to which Iroha-san would return. Misao, Misao, you should wake up right away. I heard Mother's voice. Misao, if you don't wake up now, your mother will be surprised. Iroha-san gently whispered into my ear. I nodded to him and then got out of bed. At the same time, the sliding door was opened. Ah! Well, why is Iroha-san here? Iroha-san came out of the bed and straightened his posture. Uh, good morning. I came back last night. Oh, good morning. You should have told me that. I only made enough breakfast for two people. While she was saying that, Mother went out of the room. She looks happy. I guess I'm not the only one. I'm happy too. This house is my home now. I was able to have a nice deep sleep after a long time of not doing so. Um, let's see. It's great that you could recover. I also was able to sleep well. You talked to me. I also was able to sleep well. You certainly look well. After saying that, Iroha-san started to caress my cheek, and I enjoyed the, j the feeling of its touch. Yes, Misao. You finally break through. What did I break through? The fortune-telling. You've clearly denied it, haven't you? Uh, ah, uh, how did you know about that? Of course I could tell by watching you, right? Said so, as if it were natural and all. And all I could do was laugh. I decided to forget about it. When I said that, Yoroha-san narrowed his eyes and nodded happily. Ah, uh, I forgot something very important. We exchanged our morning kiss. I'm going now. I looked up at Yoroha-san, who was standing next to me. Yoroha-san's smile shining in the light of the day, and the morning sun was very bright to me. I'll be back late, so you should sleep before I return. You don't need to talk to me like I'm a child. I'm worried. It seems like you'll stay up late waiting for me. I'm okay. I'll wait for you until it won't be a problem for my work tomorrow. If that's what you'll do, then I guess it's alright. Well, I'm going now. Take care. I waved my hand to see Iroha-san off, and the townspeople came close as if they were waiting for a moment to say something to us. Oh, the famous couple has returned. It felt like something was missing not to see you guys when I came to the store. Everyone said things like that to us as they walked by. I wasn't trying to be famous in this town. That's why I told you countless times not to do those things. I just wanted to brag about us. His tone seemed confused, so it made me laugh. So, learning from this experience, you'll hold back a little, right? I'll think about it. He felt like he had no intention of stopping, so I puffed up my cheeks in a pouting manner. Well, it's been a while since we've seen that. Then people started to gather around us. We've been saying that we miss seeing you guys together. Yeah, that's right. You guys are like an institution here. I'm a human being, so don't go calling me a famous site or an institution, or what have you. Everyone laughed at Iroha-san's words. I guess the people of this town and I missed these kind of conversations. After laughing a lot, they headed back to their work. Gosh. What troublemakers. Iroha-san and I looked at each other and laughed, together. Because with the way things were going, I thought everything would be fine. But I didn't have any idea about what would happen after this. That's it for this episode, and I hope that you might be interested in hearing the rest of the story. I'd love to see you in some of my future videos, and I'd be grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with some of your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. They're really signing out.
Bye-bye, everybody.